our miniseries, The Pacific, focuses on real guys. Each of them gives a very different perspective of what it was like to join the Marines and to fight in the Pacific. Anytime we're telling true stories, you have to feel a special responsibility just simply getting it right. I really just hope that we make the World War II veterans and their families proud and that we show something authentic. It was adventurous. You were young. Uh, you had joined the Marine Corps to fight, and you were still macho and gung-ho. I turned 18 when we were on Guadalcanal. We'd been there about a month, and I remember specifically thinking, this is my birthday. How old are you? 18. Happy birthday. And I walked over and sat down and I had a five-minute meditation. Happy birthday. That I am 18 now and I'm growing up. Happy birthday, up. dear Phyllis. Happy birthday to you. We were on Guadalcanal from August the 7th. Of 42 to December 22nd. Guadalcanal is the crucial turning point in the war in the Pacific. It's our first commitment, boots on the ground, in this war, and it's an immense test. Those early days on uh, Guadalcanal were kind of wild. The Japanese would come in there and turn on their searchlights and bombard us for hours. You would just pray and hold on. Uh, there wasn't anything else you could do. I don't think anybody that lived through that would ever forget it. That was really frightful. It was just unbelievable. The Marines learned how to fight on Guadalcanal. We had our own job to do, and we did it. Sid Phillips saw the first half of the war and was one of the young men who got rotated home. We just couldn't believe that he had finally come home. How did they come back? How were they able to go through all of this and just get on with their lives? I felt like I was dreaming this, that I was going to wake up and be back there on Pavuvu again. We see what happens when they get home and they try to readjust the civilian life. Welcome home, Eugene. How did they pick up their lives and put on a tie and go back to either school or go back to a job? It was hideously difficult for all of them. The last time we had seen Sidney, he was a slender little 17-year-old boy. The man that came home to us was entirely different. When you first arrived home like that, it was just impossible to speak without cursing. Uh, we'd been doing it for so long. You did not want to talk about the war to your family, to other civilians, no. To another veteran, like to Eugene, when Eugene came home, we would talk freely about it for uh, hours at night. It would be therapeutic to both of us. Why did I end up back here when all those other fellows didn't? I thought that. Every guy back has thought that. But you just got to pull yourself out of bed in the morning and get on with the day. You do that enough times in a row, you forget some things. I think the war changed me quite a bit, maybe for the better. It had disciplined us. We were humbled by it. And for the rest of your life, you. You appreciate a glass of clean water. You appreciate clean sheets. You, you appreciate good food. Well, I came back to Mobile when I was discharged and attended local college. Then I was accepted into medical school at the University of Alabama and married a wonderful, wonderful girl right after the war. We were married for 54 years. Couldn't have had a better wife, have three children, 12 grandchildren, and I don't know how many great-grandchildren. I, I think you have seven great-grandchildren. It's, it's kind of like hitting the jackpot on a slot machine. I've had a wonderful life. I really have. <laughs>